We're coming to the end of our organic chemistry lectures, and we have two last topics to go. We have sugars and we have proteins. What I'm doing right now is finishing up electron proteins, so I want to go over a little with, with you and take a look. When we classify proteins, we usually classify them as fibrous, globular, and sometimes membrane proteins. But I'll save membrane proteins to when we get to the bio section. So we're going to just talk about fibrous proteins and globular. Now, what I'm going to do is gear this towards the DAT and the OAT exam. When you go to dental school and grad school, you'll go into this in a little more detail. But if you know what I'm showing you here, you're good to go. A fibrous protein I wrote down to you is elongated in shape. So as you can see, I sort of draw it. It look like fibers, right? And notice they have no 3D structure. So there's no tertiary structure on a fibrous protein. Fibrous proteins are for contractile and skeletal and structural purposes. For instance, think cytoskeleton, or think muscle, tendons, bone, things that are used for strength. We're gonna have fibrous proteins. Now, if it's a fibrous protein, it's water insoluble. And a lot of you guys, or I think everybody in the group should have it in front of you, the notes. So I gave you the notes, but for the kids that don't, part of, is not part of this group, we're looking off the board. Water insoluble is a fibrous protein, which means the outside of the molecule is hydrophobic um, in nature. So the, the amino acids making up the outside portion is hydrophobic, on the inside would be hydrophilic. And that makes sense, if it's insoluble in water, outside should be hydrophobic. Now, since they're made up of two or more chains, we do speak of a quaternary structure. If you remember, a quaternary structure, which I'll go over with you in a little bit, means how one chain interacts with another chain. For instance, collagen we see as a triple helix. Um, so therefore, the way one chain interacts with another chain is what we call the quaternary structure. So even though there's no tertiary structure to speak of, we do indeed have a quaternary. Fibrous proteins, because they are insoluble in water are less sensitive to salt concentration, pH change, and even temperature. Good examples of fibrous proteins, which is a short bet on the data exam, would be actin, myosin, elastin, collagen, keratin. If you remember keratin, we just got done saying, helps make the skin waterproof. Now, for the DAT exam, you should know that the main elements that you're gonna see in a protein are what? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So any gimmick that you ever see somebody pull, oh, we radio label sulfur, where does it end up? Sulfur is in proteins, so think anything associated with proteins. Now, rarely though, you may come across a protein with the element selenium in it, okay? So um, that's rare, and also extremely rare would be phosphorus. I don't think you'll see that on the dad, but I do want to just bring that up because there is a protein called dentin phosphoprotein. If you ever want to look it up, I posted it here, the two PhD, I actually looked at their PhD paper, Dr. Lee and Dr. Vase, um, they wrote it on dentin phosphoprotein, that a protein that does have a, 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 um, a P atom in it. But that's rare though, so for the dad, I don't think I would be that concerned with knowing that. But so C-H-O-N-S is where you're gonna find in the proteins. These guys are rare. Globular proteins, the way I remember it is glob, like a glob of gum. It's all balled up. So as you can see, it's round and balled up. They're more numerous than the fibrous proteins. If it's a globular protein, it's very numerous. Water soluble, so when I think of water soluble, that means that the outside of the molecule would be consisting of hydrophilic amino acids. The inside would be hydrophobic. Good exam question to be giving me some examples. Hemoglobin, myoglobin, most enzymes. If you remembered um, on yesterday's study group, it says which is not considered a fibrous protein. The answer was, anybody remember the answer? Carboxy. Right, it was carboxypeptidase. Again, carboxypeptidase is a what? Enzyme. If it's an enzyme, it's globular. And also antibodies, which are also called immunoglobins of globular proteins. There's very complex tertiary and quaternary structures on these guys. For instance, if you looked at the hemoglobin molecule, you would see it's a tetramer. 
two alpha chains, two beta chains. This is nicely shown in my study notes. Notice I also wrote that in these globular proteins, you may have an alpha helix, you may have a beta pleated sheet, or both connected by turns or loop segments. So if you ever want to have a look, you can go to um, my notes and you can see some of those pictures. Um, globular protein, because they're outside composed of hydrophilic residues, they're very sensitive to salt, pH, and temperature changes. Here's a good example. Say, for instance, we saw a localized region that's made up of a whole bunch of polyglues. Glue is glutamic acid. So in biochemistry, instead of writing the whole thing, I just put this line, and this just means the side chain. And I wrote to you that polyglue would be an alpha helix at a pH of 3. But look what would happen at a pH of 7. You should have a ballpark idea. When you have amino acids, the carboxy group on the side chain is, say, around 3 or 4. Okay, around there. We'll use 4 as an example. Um, so if it's 4, certainly at 7, these guys are all going to be what? Deprotonated. And you might say, well, what does that mean? You have a whole bunch of negative charges next to each other, and therefore that's not going to be a good thing. That's going to cause it to unfold and form a random coil. So as you can see, these globular proteins are very sensitive to things on pH. If you understand this, and you can supplement it, you guys got notes in front of you, I think you're going to be good on this. Um, we're going to go to my bio notes, and hopefully that's coming along well. Um, we're just about ending the chemistry section, so we only got about an hour and a half tonight. But for the rest of you guys out there, I thought I'd share this with you, and we're going to be plowing ahead tonight. All right, bye-bye.